dry shampoo in before video starts, no one will know how gross I am. An autobiography by Lucy Wood. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well. I figured that we'd try something a little bit new here today because after I posted my video recently about surviving summer, um, I'm not exaggerating when I say that I have been completely flabbergasted, great word, by messages from you guys who watched the video, basically saying that you related to that video more than I was expecting. The majority of messages were from you guys saying that you totally are there right alongside me in that middle ground uh, when it comes to clothing sizes and fashion um, and shopping on the high street. I've always felt like I don't really see my body type represented on YouTube a lot um, and obviously YouTube is a big part of my life and when you don't really see your body type represented in something that you're massively interested in um, it can have a really detrimental effect on the way you think about yourself. There's obviously a lot of girls on this platform who are super slim, they tend to be the ones that in general succeed on YouTube and now, which is amazing, there is also a very prominent um, plus size community of women who are kind of fronting that whole body positive movement. They're becoming very prominent. High street brands are finally starting to sit up and pay attention to them. Um, so kind of both ends of the spectrum are quite prominent these days, but um, I'm very much in the middle of the two. I am a size 14, but I personally have always felt like I don't really belong to either of those groups. And I don't really see any YouTubers that are that size and I kind of like fine with being that size and show hauls at that size and wear their clothes at that size and give you outfit inspiration at that side. I don't see a lot of that and apparently you guys don't either because that comments section was literally just full of us all stuck in the same situation feeling the same thing um, and wanting to kind of like support each other a little bit in that I think. It's kind of made me think a little bit about maybe it's only fair for me to kind of up that representation a little bit and kind of show you an outfit I've been wearing recently um, that kind of looks all right on our body shape and our body size. Um, maybe it might help you guys to feel like that size is represented a little bit more. And I was kind of thinking while I was contemplating these videos, if I'd been watching someone of this size that I thought looked all right, looked look pretty nice, um, it would have really helped me, I think, when I was in my late teens and early 20s and even now because it would really help me if there was more girls doing this even now. So I feel a little bit of a responsibility to do this and I think it's good. <laughs> I think it'll be good. So today I'm going to be doing a little get ready with me. Uh, I'm going to take you all the way through from my makeup, hair and then show you my outfit as well, um, which is indeed a size 14 outfit. I'm actually heading to a garden party to celebrate my friend's birthday. It is a beautiful day um, and I've got a nice little outfit that I think is quite cute and I'm looking forward to showing it to you. Oh and also I promise I have actually got clothes on, I'm in my pyjamas which are actually Angelica Pickles pyjamas. Bet you're glad you came to this video for fashion advice, aren't you? That was a good move by you. So if you do enjoy this video then please do give it a little thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if this is something that you're looking forward to, if you think this is a good idea. I mean if you think it's a terrible idea then you can tell me that as well. If this is something that you would like to see me do again um, then please do let me know, I'd be really interested to hear. Um, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're new as well. Let's get a move on because there is a gin and tonic sat in that garden with my name on it and it's calling me. So let's get started. I have already showered, preened, polished, perfected, moisturised, whatever else a modern woman is supposed to do in the society that we live in. And I've got some moisturiser on my face, which I'm guessing is going to be a semi-good primer. Um, I'll inevitably regret that when my makeup is sliding off my face. I'm going to kick this off with my favourite foundation. This is kind of like my going out foundation. My going out at foundation. Too Faced, born this way. Undetectable, medium to full coverage. Normally for the daytime, this is a bit heavier than I would normally go for, to be honest. But seeing as it's a party, um, I think we're going to be hanging around to the evening. I figured that if I just do like a, a little bit of a thin layer, it still kind of like lets your skin show through a little bit. It still looks like skin, which um, I feel like a lot of heavier foundations 
definitely don't do. Um, so I like the fact that you can still see, you know, a little bit of texture and like freckles and that kind of thing through it. And I'm just bouncing that in, very exciting, with a brand new Real Technique sponge. Is there anything better in life than a brand new makeup sponge? Rather than the one that you've been using for about three years, that's covered in cat hair, sellotape together, smells a bit weird. Okay, that is foundation. Sorted. Bob's your uncle, that didn't take too long. For concealer today, I'm going for this bad boy, a stick concealer. Are we in 2003? This is actually a very good concealer. Once this goes on your face, it does not budge and it covers pretty much anything that your face can throw at you. Uh, this is the Bare Minerals Bare Pro Concealer. It is the most easy peasy concealer that covers anything. It blends super easily. It's pretty high coverage. Um, but it's got insane staying power too. It's so, so good. I'm actually gonna leave my foundation and concealer to just chill out for a bit, mingle together, take a bit of downtime and sort themselves out. And instead I'm gonna do my eyebrows next, I think, while that all sorts itself out. This is on its last legs at the moment, which I feel is always a pretty good sign for a product if you've stuck with it till it's on its last legs. Uh, this is precisely my brow pencil by Benefit, literally my go-to eyebrow pencil. It is an absolute little stub of pencil left. If I can even get both brows out of this, I'll be pleased. I have actually fake tanned for this as well. If you think my face doesn't exactly match my body at the moment, that would be because I fake tanned my bod and I don't tend to fake tan my face because it always makes me a bit spotty. I don't fake tan very often anymore. I used to do it all the time. But when I've got like an event coming up like this, where I know that I've got to wear something a bit more summery, not very many clothes involved, I can't just like hide in a shroud for the entire afternoon. If I know that maybe it's gonna test how I feel about myself and my body a little bit, um, I fake tan in advance. I've learned over the years that there's a few things I can do to give myself like the tiniest little percentage of confidence boost. And when you struggle with your body, every single tiny percentage of that counts. Every little helps. Um, and fake tan is always something that helps me out a little bit with that. Although it nearly absolutely backfired on me when I was putting it on last night because I did my legs, did my thighs, got all the way up to bum kind of belly button area. I was doing pretty well. No streaks so far. And then what happened? Oh, I just ran out of fake tan. So very much looked like some kind of Neapolitan ice cream. <laughs> Luckily, I think this is just my scalp's roots come into play here. But um, I actually had an emergency bottle of fake tan hidden away in the depths of my drawers. And I'm just setting these quite bold brows. Didn't really mean to go that ham with them, never mind. Um, I'm just setting those with Glossier Boy Brow, AKA Love My Life, AKA the only brow product that anyone on this world ever needs, to be honest. Using an absolute classic for this because you can't go wrong with Rimmel Stay Matte. I mean, look at the state of it. That's a well-loved powder right there, isn't it? That's just me in powder form. Just pop a little bit of that on my chin, keep all that in place. Take a little bit up on my top lip because we got ourselves a Sula. Sweaty upper lip lip. I say that quite often in videos and no one ever seems to know what film it's from. If you know what film that is, comment down below. What clue's gonna give you? It's a cinematic classic. It was robbed at the Oscars, some would say. Time to add a little bit of colour and attempt some definition into this dinner plate moon face of mine. Um, for that, I'm gonna reach for the Bare Minerals Invisible Bronze. So we'll chuck that around here somewhere. When I um, bronze and contour, I mean, there's many, many stages of my makeup routine that I don't really know what I'm doing. But bronzing and contouring is one of the major major culprits in my makeup routine for me just pretending to know what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. Anyone would think I've been outside in the last three weeks. It's a miracle. For highlight today, I'm gonna bring out the big guns. There's only one thing for it. Um, I'm gonna use the iconic London illuminator drops. You'll go on Instagram and you'll see the beauty gurus literally like do this and like put a small tidal wave of highlighter onto their face. Um, and it looks amazing on them, but 
I can't pull that off. It just makes me look like an enormous polished clock. I never thought it was gonna be a product that would look good on me because I just don't wear that much makeup really. Um, but I actually got it in a goodie bag. I think it was the Cosmo Awards actually. So didn't come home with the award awkward but I uh, did come in with a free highlighter so you win some you lose some actually you can just tap it out with your finger like this and it just gives like the most amazing it's almost like a wet look kind of like sheen to your skin looks like I've been to the gym and then come out as one of those girls who just looks amazing at the gym it's not me also I never go to the gym so <laughs> for some reason your gal's got um consistently oily eyelids even though the rest of my face is never quenched and is dry AF all of the time, for some reason my eyelids just really enjoy being slick ricks. You probably won't be too surprised to hear that I'm gonna do the same eyeshadow look that I turn to whenever I don't know what eyeshadow look to do. So I'm calling on my trusty Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette. I mean, look at this, it's well loved, isn't it? The surprise for me as well when I'm doing my makeup like this is always because I don't really wash my brushes very often, I never really know what colour eyeshadow is going to come out into my eye from last time, which is always an exciting turn of events, isn't it, really, when you've got somewhere to go. I'm going to keep it quite simple today, though, because is anybody else just always the person when they go out and about to stuff like this that's got ten times more makeup on than anybody else? I think that's what watching YouTube videos does to you. It makes you think that you've got to have makeup on like that all the time. But actually, most normal people really don't bother. I'm not sure why I'm talking about my makeup in so much detail, to be honest. I know that everyone's come here for the clothing bit, but you'll just have to sit tight there, won't you? If you want a clue, then um, I've gone a little bit rogue and I've gone sleeveless because I thought, if we're trying to normalise this, then I'm not sticking to any like clothing rules or whatever people have you believe that you're supposed to wear. You can wear whatever the bloody hell you want. It's just a little dress that I picked up just for this really because I needed something like summery to wear but I also thought it'd be a good option for like any like summer weddings you got coming up or anything like that so I thought it'd be a good one to show. So now let's inevitably ruin everything with some wonky winged eyeliner and some smudge mascara. Eyeliner is of course my absolute number one bay, ride or die. I feel like I'll probably be buried with one of these one day in my pocket. Um, this is the Kat Von D tattoo liner. Is this gonna be one of those days where I just have to keep adding eyeliner over and over and over until it ends up looking like I've got a black eye. Yep, that is indeed way too much eyeliner. I really didn't mean to put that much on my face. What can you do? I do actually really need to get another one of those eyeliners. In fact, I'm running out of several makeup products, but um, we're going to Berlin next week. So I figured that I'd just try and hold off as best I can and just use all the random stuff that's like in the back of my drawers until I can get to the airport. And then I'll basically just do one big supermarket sweep of duty free and pick up all the products that I need to get. Ah, oh, supermarket sweep. RIP Del Winton. Lashes curled, I'm gonna go in with the mascara that has actually changed the way I feel about mascaras. I have previously never ever found a mascara that doesn't end up halfway down my chin by lunchtime. This is Smith & Cult Lash Dance Mascara. Um, it's definitely quite extra. Um, I got this as a birthday present because it had been on my wish list for a while. I think I originally heard about this from Zoella. Um, and if Zoella says something's good, I'm all over it. It's going straight in my bag. I've already checked out. Cheers to Zoe because this is the only mascara I've ever really found that doesn't smudge completely down my face. That's nearly my makeup done. I don't mean to alarm anyone. But I might have actually just done my whole face of makeup with zero disasters of any kind. Don't mean to uh, set the alarms off or anything, but just wait till I put my lipstick on now and accidentally like inhale the lipstick and end up vlogging from the back of an ambulance or something. My lipstick option is a classic, MAC Velvet Teddy, because you literally can't go wrong. It looks great with every single makeup look ever. Um, and I also picked up a gloss option, but thinking about it, this party that we're going to involves food. So is lip gloss a good idea? Do I want lip gloss in my eyelashes when I try and eat a hot dog? Probably not. So I'm gonna go for Velvet Teddy today because I just feel like it'll stay in place slightly better than a gloss will. Makeup is complete. Kind of impressed with myself, not gonna lie. Every so often you have a day like this, don't you, where you do your makeup and you think, am I Nikki Tutorials? But we're by no means finished because next on the agenda 
is sorting out this mop and that's the bit that is quite time consuming. I actually prefer it when I put a little bit of a wave through it because it takes it up ever so slightly um, and I prefer it when it's a little bit kind of messy beachy looking. I say beachy, it literally just looks like I rolled out of bed. All it takes for me to do that is a giant hair clip because I basically just section it off like this. Then I just grab a hairbrush. I don't really brush it like fully. I just kind of go over it a little bit to get all the massive tangles out. And before I go in and put a little bit of wave in, I actually just give it a quick spritz with dry shampoo. Um, if you're after a dry shampoo recommendation, this is my fave of all time ever. This is the Colab dry shampoo. And I just give the roots like a quick spritz like this, just for like, A, because I probably should have washed my hair yesterday. Um, and also just cause it's quite good for like a little bit of extra volume. And then I reach for the trusty GHDs. Not gonna lie, I've had these since I was about 15. I probably need to buy a new pair. Are they even fire safe anymore? Who knows? I will just confess that until I got this haircut, I couldn't do the whole like curling and waving with straighteners thing. I just couldn't do it. So I always felt like a bit of a fail of a girl. I feel like that's like girl lesson number one. So if you like me are still forever struggling how to wave your hair with straighteners, this is what I do. In literally foolproof terms, I take an inch section like this, I put it between the straighteners, I turn the straightener like that as I go down it, and then I stop just before the bottom, and it does a wave. It does that. That wasn't actually a very good one. Turn it round, do the hokey cokey. That's what it's all about. So I'm gonna quickly do that now, and then I'll catch up with you in a minute. Ah, you. Oh, just straighten my finger. Beauty tips with Lucy Wood. Don't straighten your fingers. Okay, I'm really bored of this now and it's too hot, so I'm gonna stop. <laughs> so that's basically what I've been doing with my hair to make it look a bit like messy on purpose, not just like I'm a disgusting person who needs to brush the hair. So I'm just gonna have to leave that as it is. It will inevitably drop out within the next half an hour, but hey, at least I tried. I also totally forgot that I didn't spritz my face, so I'm gonna just quickly do that now with Urban Decay All Nighter Makeup Setting Spray for long lasting makeup. This stuff is actually great. I love this stuff so much. Ah, <sighs> so while my face dries from that small shower, um, the only thing I've got left now to do is to get dressed and show you my outfit, which I feel like is the bit that this video is actually for. So I'm gonna pop my outfit on and show you what I'm wearing to the party now. Um, as I said earlier, I'm hoping that even if I just do these videos occasionally and show you a new outfit that I've been enjoying every once in a while, it might just give you like a little bit of like nice outfit inspiration and shopping inspiration that is actually realistic for a size 14 girl. Because I love watching hauls, I watch every haul that comes into my subscription box, but 90% of the time, it's clothes that aren't really for me. <laughs> so I'm hoping that maybe these videos will be for you because they are for me. And so many of you said that you look at my body and see your own body. And that's really great. Like I love that idea. Um, so anyway, I'll stop rambling now. I'll go and pop my outfit on and I'll see you in a sec. <laughs> dress I really hope you like it I actually um I'm quite a big fan of it I never ever used to feel good in anything um, but since I've tried very very consciously to try and change my mentality a little bit about stuff like this um I actually really like it it's super affordable as well um, I'm gonna link everything in my outfit makeup hair related things everything's gonna be down in the description box I love that it has all this like spare fabric around here I think it's quite flattering the way that it like folds up at your waist I like the length of it it's just long enough to fit cycling shorts underneath which is a game changer for a party or a day out or whatever you're going to and I like the way that the print kind of does enough so that you don't have to have too much else going on because I'm not very good at complicated outfits so I like that this does the most all by itself but I guess that's a wrap um I better go now because I've got a boyfriend who's desperate to go and hit the barbecue so if you did enjoy this video then please 
please do give it a little thumbs up. Um, I feel like I really need your validation on this one. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Is this a little series that you would like me to continue with? Um, would you like me to do more clothing related things? I really struggle to say fashion because I know nothing about fashion but I am quite good at spending money on clothes. That's my version of fashion. As always, I really wanna hear what you guys think, so do pop a comment down below. And also, don't forget to subscribe if you're new around here. If you wanna stick around for more stuff like this, then make sure you hit the subscribe button. And I'm off to have a lovely time. I mean, I hear there's a bouncy castle involved, so this can only go well. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, both at Lucy Jane Wood, and I will see you guys very soon with another video. Bye. Mwah.